What's up, everyone? Welcome to part two of our Pi Audio Visualizer slash Spectrum Analyzer. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to use SciPy's FFT algorithm to add the Spectrum Viewer. So in the top, we've got our Waveform Viewer, which we showed how to do in the first video. And below it, we have the Spectrum. So just to give you an example, if I provided a nice pure tone, you can see that it shows some pretty clear peaks. So it's fairly responsive. I'm getting about 15 frames per second, which isn't too bad. So let's get started and show you how to set this up. So we're going to be using SciPy's FFT pack for the fast Fourier transform. And if you're unfamiliar with the Fourier transform, I have some videos which I'll link in the description which go into detail and explain some of the basics and do some visualization. And feel free to research online, there's tons of material. Um, in this video, I'm not going to go too in-depth with it because there's so much to talk about. I'm just going to focus on the key instructions for using SciPy's FFT pack. Now let's jump over to our previous notebook, and I'd like to point out some of the changes I've made. So besides highlighting and commenting the code a little bit better, what I've done is lowered the chunk size. So before it was four times 1024. Now I'm only doing two times 1024. And the reason why I did that was this increases the refresh rate of our plot. So if I lower it anymore, we don't really get any faster updates. So this was a good size to choose. So that was the main change. And now let's get started with our FFT part. So from scipy.fft pack, we are going to import FFT. So what that'll do is give us all the FFT algorithms that we need. All right, so because we're gonna be adding another plot to our tool, so the way we do that is we make this a tuple and we're gonna call the other axes AX2. And then this number right here needs to be a two. All right, so the next thing we need to do is create our X variable for the spectrum. So that's going to be a frequency range. And I'm going to call it X FFT. And we're going to use linspace for this. And it's going to go from zero to rate. And the number of points we're going to use is chunk. So you might be thinking, hey, if our sample rate is 44.1 kilohertz, shouldn't the range go from half of that? Because based on the Nyquist frequency, we can't resolve frequencies above half the sample rate. And you're right, but we are going to be plotting it up to 22 kilohertz and you'll see how that works in a second. So the next thing we want to do is create our new line object and I'm just going to call that line FFT and don't forget the comma after it and that's going to be equal to AX2 and we're going to plot the, the X FFT and the Y data doesn't matter. Remember it's going to get updated in a loop anyways. So we're just going to use some random data, Oops. random dot rand, and the size of it is also going to be chunk, and the line formatting will do the same thing and make it line with two. All right, so the last thing I want to do before we get into the loop is I want to change the, um, the x limits on our second plot. So ax2 dot set xlim. We're going to go from 20 up to half the rate. So the reason why I'm doing 20 is because at zero, um, we're not getting any data there. The line sort of is discontinuous, so a good spot is up to 20. So before we get into our while loop, I'd like to take a moment to give a brief demonstration of how the FFT algorithm works. So if I come down here, and what I'm going to do is let's just take the FFT of a, a simple sine wave. And we're using the same x variable from above, which was zero to um, zero to two chunks. So if I were to run this, you can see that the values it returned are complex numbers. And you can see that this point here and this point here, they're complex conjugates of each other. Basically what that means is the sign changes on the complex number. Same with this and this. You can see that the real part is the same, or almost the same, but the complex part has a different sign. It, you know, this one's plus, this one's minus. So if I were to 
let's go ahead and plot this. We'll do plt.plot. And also what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do np.abs. And what this does is it converts those complex numbers into real numbers. So now when I plot this, you can see that there's there's two peaks, but we're plotting a sine wave. So what's going on here? Well, we're actually getting two frequencies. One is the complex conjugate, or you can think of it as the negative frequency of it. So that's what we're getting when we call FFT. We're getting two, we're getting double the data. And that's not what we want. We just want half of it. So what we're gonna do is our FFT, we're only gonna take the first half of it. So I'll show you how to do that here. We're basically gonna slice half of it out. Now we'll come up to our while loop and right below where we set the line data for our waveform, I'm gonna create a new um, variable called yFFT and that's gonna be equal to the FFT of our integer data, so data int. So now once we take that, we need to do our slicing we also want to rescale it to sort of normalize it so all the peaks are less than one. And then we need to set the Y data for our spectrum plot. So we're going to do all of that in one line. So we're going to call um, line FFT dot set Y data. And then in here, we are going to do our rescaling and our slicing. So let's do the slicing first. So we're going to call um, numpy.abs, which again just passes us the, just gives us the real values of our complex array. And so it's going to be um, absolute of yFFT. And also we want to do our slicing. So the slicing is going to be the first half. And this, um, if we look, this thing is going to be the length of two chunks. So we're just going to go from zero to one chunk. So that's the rescaling, or that's the slicing. So now let's do the rescaling. So what we're gonna do is, normally what you do to rescale it, you do two times, you multiply it by two, and then you divide by the amplitude of your waveform, and you also divide by the number of bins or the number of frequencies in your spectrum. So let's do that. We're gonna do, let's multiply it by two, and then we're also gonna divide by the amplitude, which was 256. And we're gonna multiply the number of bins, which is chunks. All right, so now this should be everything we need. So let's go ahead and run it. All right, so you can see here that um, looks like we're getting what we should be getting. Um, the one thing, oh, I, I see what the problem is. So what I wanna do, instead of having a linear, X scale, I want to make this semi log or a log scale because um, you can see here the linear typically you'll you'll see a spectrum in a log scale. This is sort of uh, not the way I'm used to seeing it, or usually you won't see it this way. So let's go ahead and do that. So up here where we yeah, where we set our line or where we create our line data, let's change this to semi log X. Cool, this looks a little more normal. So now you can see that we've got our waveform up top and our spectrum below. So let me try and give it a pure sine wave. So you can see here the nice strong peak and let me go ahead and do the tone generator again just to check that we're, you know, our, everything's correct and we're getting the right frequency. So I'm gonna go ahead and play a 440 hertz um, tone. So you can see here, 440. So if I hover, you can see, yeah, it's, it says 430. Um, I'm looking right here in this area. So 430. Close enough. So yeah, we're, we've got our axes scaled correctly. And just to show you how fast this thing's going, if now when you hit stop, it's calculating what the average frame rate was. So I'm getting 13 frames per second here. So 
I think that's going to do it for this video. Um, in the next one, we'll try and clean this up, maybe try a new plotter, maybe try different algorithms to try and speed this thing up. And then we'll look into, I don't know, maybe some, some audio processing. Maybe we can save the data, filter the data, make some cool sounds, things like that. Um, if you've got any suggestions, leave comments below. If you like the video, um, you know, give it a like. And if you want to be here for the next video, hit the subscribe button. Thanks, guys. See ya.